Okay, so <clears throat> let's talk about the derivatives of exponents and logarithms. Okay. So, <clears throat> well, exponential functions, not exponents. So, the first one we're going to deal with is the derivative of e to the x. Okay? Now, e to the x um, is a very special one in the fact that its derivative <coughs> is itself. Okay? So, <coughs> we have another problem with this one. Let's say e to the 5x. Now, this is going to come from the channel. I'm just going to go ahead and show you all this, that the derivative of e to the 5x is e to the 5x multiplied by 5. It just spits out a 5. Okay? And so, the derivative of, let's say, e to the 7x is just e to the 7x. Well, it's going to spit out a 7. Now let's do this in an arbitrary way. <clears throat> let's say e to the lambda x. Now e to the lambda x multiplied by lambda. And the reason that I'm saying that this is a very special one is that this is um, one of the simplest differential equations that you can deal with. Which is this difference, right? V prime equals lambda v. So e to the lambda x is actually the solution to this differential equation. Okay. Well, <clears throat> what is e? E is just a number. Okay? It's a special number. Uh, but that's all it is, it's a number. So what if I try to take in the derivative of something that didn't have an e in it? So, say five to the x. Mm. This one's a little bit different. If you have other numbers as the base, well, this is what happens. to the x times the natural four to five. Okay? So let's say we were doing the derivative of seven to the x. Um, seven to the x times the natural log of seven. Alright, it doesn't matter what number I did. <coughs> pi to the x, so pi to the x times the natural log of five. So in, whenever you take a uh, derivative of something that does not have the e as the base, it's going to spit out um, just this natural log of whatever the base is. And if you want to think about it <coughs> in this sense,
And just for uh, information's sake, uh, if you're looking at the calculator, then it says log of x. That is going to be log base 10 of x. Okay. Now this gets confusing, but this is standard notation for um, a graphing calculator, or any standard calculator, basically. The log is just log base 10, and the natural log is log base b. <coughs> um, however, if you're, if you're looking at other textbooks, um, they can have different meanings. So, for instance, if you're looking at a computer science textbook, textbook and it's using log, sometimes that really means log base 2. Now, why would a computer science textbook use log base 2? Well, it has to do with binary. Okay? Uh, then it, even in other math textbooks, um, uh, in, in, like a, a complex analysis book, a lot of the older ones, whenever they write log in this form, what they really mean is natural log, but uh, it's kind of, well, once you get into complex analysis, um, they can use some slightly different notation. So just be careful when using logarithms depending on the context of the situation because you might have different interpretations of what log means. Okay. If you're looking in a chemistry textbook, for instance, log means log base 10. Okay. But it, it depends on the context of the situation. Okay. Now let's examine um, what the derivatives of logarithms are. So the first one, what is the derivative of the natural log of x? That's just one of the other x. Okay. If you have the derivative of other bases, say log base 10 of x is going to be 1 divided by x natural log of 10. So, that's similar in respects to um, these guys right here. Uh, but instead of spinning a logarithm out to the front, and we'll prove this during the next lecture through implicit differentiation. I mean, logarithm differentiation, excuse me. Uh, but just know that if you have other bases, whenever it's an exponential function, it's just logarithm out to the front. Whenever you have a logarithm function, it's going to spin it down to the bottom. So, in order that whenever you're taking the root of logarithms, it, what it really wants to do is force it down to the bottom of the fraction. So, <clears throat> root of with respect to x of, let's say, log base 5 of x. Okay? And that would be 1 divided by x, natural log 5. And why does this actually happen? If you have, all right, let's say we were taking the derivative of log base 7x. I don't know why some of you do that, but put this back. Wow. So, <clears throat> another way to write this problem is through the laws of logarithms. You can write this as the natural log of x divided by the natural log of 7. Okay? And now, the natural log of 7 is just a constant, so when you take it from the derivative of, you're taking the root of the natural log of x. Okay? The derivative of the natural log of x is 1 divided by x, so <coughs> that's how we get to the point of 1 divided by x, and that's the natural log of 7. <coughs> and in the video over um, logarithmic differentiation, I'll go ahead at that point and do the review of all the different laws of logarithms and how we can use logarithms to manipulate very difficult problems and actually make them relatively simple to solve. Like, we'll take a problem that is, looks like 
horrible fractions, and all these things being multiplied. We'll use logarithms to break those into pieces, and you'll be able to solve it in just two lines.